A very good evening aspirants. Welcome to the Hindu newspaper analysis brought to you by Shankar IAS Academy. So displayed here are the list of news articles that we are going to discuss today. So without much delay, let us get into the first news article discussion. Now have a look at this news article. See this news article talks about a pilot study conducted by Apollo Proton Cancer Center. Now this study was conducted on a small group of high risk prostate cancer patients and the results indicate that the proton therapy could significantly reduce side effects compared to conventional radiation therapy. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context we are going to understand what is proton therapy. See proton therapy which is also called as proton beam therapy is a type of radiation therapy. It uses protons to treat cancer and that is why the name proton therapy is given. See so far radiation therapy that uses x-rays are used to treat cancer. But proton therapy is a newer type of radiation therapy in this field. That is why it has made news today. Okay. Now before understanding how this proton therapy works you must know about protons. We all know about protons right? It is a positively charged particle. See it is believed that at high energy protons can destroy cancer cells. So this proton therapy is a treatment that uses high powered energy to treat cancer and some non-cancerous tumors. So how does this proton therapy works? See there is a machine called synchrotron or cyclotron that speeds up protons. This high speed of the protons create high energy. This energy makes the proton travel to the desired depth in the body and the protons then give the targeted radiation dose in the tumor. Here you must remember this one fact. See with proton therapy there is less radiation dose outside of the tumor. That is there will be no radiation beyond the tumor. But in regular radiation therapy x-rays continue to give radiation doses as they leave the person's body. This means that the radiation damages the nearby healthy tissues. So this is something very positive about proton therapy as it does not release radiation outside of the tumor and it does not damage the nearby healthy tissues. But still they have some side effects. We will see about them. See in general common side effects of proton therapy includes fatigue, then hair loss around the parts of your body which is being treated, then skin redness around the part of your body that is being treated then soreness around the part of your body which is being treated. So now coming to the final part that is the application of proton therapy. See proton therapy is useful for treating tumors that are near the important parts of the body. For example cancers near the brain and spinal cord. So as I already said as proton therapy can treat the cancer by targeted delivery of radiation the probability of the healthy part getting affected is very low. Know that it is also used for treating children because it lessens the chance of harming healthy growing tissues. Apart from this, it may also be used to treat central nervous system cancer, eye cancer, head and neck cancer, lung cancer, liver cancer, prostate cancer, spinal and pelvic sarcomas which are cancers that occur in the soft tissues and bones and non-cancerous brain tumors. Okay. So these are all some of the important facts that you have to know about this proton therapy very important. So in this news article discussion we saw in detail about proton therapy we saw about its working and finally we ended our discussion by seeing about some of its applications. So with these learned points now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now take a look at this news article. See this news article says that ISRO is going to achieve a remarkable feat of 200th successful launch of the Rohini RH200. See this RH200 is nothing but a member of the Rohini sounding rocket family and it is used by the ISRO for atmospheric studies. The news article also says that the rocket is going to be launched from Tumba during the World Space Week celebrations. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, we are going to understand about sounding rockets. So what is a sounding rocket? Does its name came from the unique sound that it makes? Really not. See sounding rockets are one or two stage solid propellant rockets. They are used for probing the upper atmospheric regions and for space research. And know that sounding rockets take their name from the nautical term to sound which means to make measurements. So it does not get this name because of the sound it makes. Okay. So now we know that 
it is used for space research and upper atmospheric exploration purposes now let us see what is the need of such rockets and here you might have a doubt also we have normal satellites for exploration purposes right then why do we need sounding rockets so to answer both the questions you should first know how a sounding rocket operates see sounding rockets carry scientific instruments into space along a parabolic trajectory now see this image here can you see the parabolic trajectory this is how a sounding rocket works firstly the rocket is launched into space from a launching station and after this multi deployments happens and the experimental equipment is deployed into space so during this time the equipment collects data and send it to ground station and after it finishes its work parachute is deployed and it returns back to ground so this is how it works and know that their overall time in space is very brief brief in the sense it takes typically 5 to 20 minutes lower vehicle speeds for a well placed scientific experiment the short time and low vehicle speeds are more than adequate to carry out a successful scientific experiments apart from this there are some important regions of space that are too low for satellites and so sounding rockets they provide the platforms that can carry out measurements in these regions so now you know the application of sounding rockets now coming to the benefits of using sounding rockets see the first thing is the cost factor see this cost factor makes sounding rockets an attractive alternative as they do not need expensive boosters or extended telemetry and they also do not need tracking coverage since they never go into orbit as a result mission cost or substantially less than those required for orbiter missions secondly the sounding rocket program they take advantage of a high degree of commonality this means that the rocket do not require complex specifications that are specific to each mission so it can be used commonly for all experiments with every launch only the information to be collected will change and the next benefit is that the payload can be developed in a very short time frame sometimes as quick as 3 months this rapid response enables scientists to react quickly to new phenomena and to incorporate the latest most up to date technology in their experiments okay so in this news article discussion we saw what is a sounding rocket a sounding rocket or one or two stage solid propellant rockets which are used for probing the upper atmospheric regions and for space research so we saw why these sounding rockets are very important first is user friendly that is to carry out a successful scientific experiment short time and low vehicle speeds are more than adequate secondly some important regions of space are too low for satellites and because of these two reasons sounding rockets provide the only platforms that can carry out measurement in those areas then we saw about the benefits of sounding rockets first is cost effective second is they have an advantage of a high degree of commonality and finally we saw that the payload can be developed in a very short time frame so these are all some of the important points that you have to note about the sounding rockets so these learned points let us move on to the next news article discussion take a look at these news articles they describe about the recent operation carried out by both central bureau of investigation that is cbi and national investigation agency that is nia See while CBI has targeted groups in India with circulate child porn videos NIA has launched investigation against terror modules across various states in India so this is the crux of the news article given here so in this context let us understand some of the differences between both NIA and CBI before that the syllabus relevant to this news article is highlighted here for your reference just go through it so let's start our discussion with the origin of these institutions See Central Bureau of Investigation that is CBI was established in the year 1963 it was established according to the recommendation of Santanam committee on prevention of corruption here note that the CBI is not a statutory body but it derives some of its power from the Delhi Police Special Establishment Act 1946 now coming to National Investigation Agency that is NIA It was established in the year 2008 after the Mumbai Taj terror attacks. See, NIA is a statutory body which derives its power from the National Investigation Agency Act 2008. So, now coming to the ministries under which these institutions function. 
See, CBI functions under the Ministry of Personal, Public, Grievance and Pensions. While the NIA, they function under the Ministry of Home Affairs. Okay. Now, coming to the specific roles assigned to these two institutions. See, CBI functions with a special mandate of preventing corruption by union government employees who are holding high offices. It also takes up certain types of cases which remain unsolved by the state police on demand by the concerned state police or under the order of the concerned high court. So now coming to NIA, its primary objective is to stop terrorist attacks being carried out within the territory of India. It specializes in counter-terrorism relating investigation. Here note that NIA Act was amended in the year 2019. This allowed the NIA to investigate few other offenses which includes human trafficking, offenses related to counterfeit currency or bank notes, then manufacture or sale of prohibited arms, fourth is cyber terrorism and finally offenses under the Explosive Substances Act 1908. So these are the new areas in which NIA can start investigation according to the amended version of NIA Act. Now coming to the organization of CBI. See, presently the CBI has seven divisions which are working under the union government. They are firstly anti-corruption division, second is economics offenses division, third is administration division, then special crimes division, directorate of prosecution, central forensic science laboratory division and finally policy and international police corporation division. So these are all the seven working divisions of CBI. Here note that the role of Special Crimes Division is supplementary to that of State Police. And also remember generally both the Chiefs of CBI and NIA are from the Indian Police Services. So how are they appointed? See the appointment of CBI Chief is done by a three member committee which includes Prime Minister as Chairman, the Leader of Opposition and Chief Justice of India or any other judge nominated by him. Then the appointment of NIA Chief. It is done by the Appointments Committee of Cabinet. Initially, the name for the chief post is proposed by the Home Ministry under which NIA works. So, this is all with respect to CBI and NIA. It is a very important topic. There might be preliminary questions and you can even use these as a value addition in your main answers as well. So, in this news article discussion, we saw in detail about NIA and CBI. We saw about its origin. We saw about which ministry they come under and we saw about their functions. And then we saw how the chiefs of both NIA and CBI are appointed. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. See this article here. It says that the ash collected from the burning of a stockpile of 2,479 rhino horns was used in the concrete mix to create the life-size rhinos. See, these horns were seized from poachers and smugglers and collected from animals that died naturally. And the article says that the burning of horns was done to send a message to those involved in the illegal wildlife trade. And also it was done to demonstrate that rhino horns have no medical value. So this is the crux of the news article given here. Now using this as an opportunity, we are going to revise about one horned rhinos. So you have this basic understanding, there are three species of rhinos in Asia. They are Great One Horned, Javan and Sumatran Rhinoceros. Among these three, the Great One Horned Rhino is the largest one. Now talking about the habitat, see the preferred habitat of an Indian rhinoceros is alluvial floodplains. They also love areas containing tall grasses along the foothills of the Himalayas. Formerly, they were extensively distributed in the Gangetic Plains. But today, the species is restricted to small habitat in Indo-Nepal Terai and Northern West Bengal and Assam. Now, why is this? See, the animal which was once widespread across the entire northern part of Indian subcontinent now has gone down as they were hunted for sport or they were killed as agricultural pest. This pushed the species very close to extinction and by the start of the 20th century where only 200 wild greater one horned rhinoceros remained. So after strict protection and management measures from Indian and the Nepalese wildlife authorities, the great one horned rhino was brought back from the extinction brink. However, no more than 2000 remain in the wild and there are only two places which contain more than 100 rhinos. They are Kaziranga National Park in Assam which is in India and Chitwan National Park which is in Nepal. 
Also know that in India, rhinos are mainly found in Kaziranga National Park, Pobitara Wildlife Sanctuary, Orang National Park, Manas National Park in Assam. They are also found in Jaldapara National Park and Garumara National Park in West Bengal and Dudwa Tiger Reserve in Uttar Pradesh. So now let us see some of the facts about its physical characteristics. See, Indian rhinos are brownish grey in colour and they are hairless. They have skin that appears to be armour plated. A single horn sits on top of their snout. And their upper lip is semi prehensile. Here, prehensile means capable of grasping. Okay? Now, talking about their diet, they primarily graze with a diet consisting almost entirely of grasses as well as leaves. They also eat branches of shrubs and trees. And they also like fruits and aquatic plants. So these are all some of the important points that you have to note about Indian rhinos. So in this news article discussion, we saw in detail about rhinos, their types and we saw why they were in the brink of extinction and then we saw some of the physical characteristics of Indian rhinos. So with these learned points, now let us move on to the next part of the news article discussion which is the preliminary practice questions. Now look at this first question. With reference to Central Bureau of Investigation CBI and the National Investigation Agency NIA, consider the following statements. Statement 1. Both the CBI and NIA are statutory bodies. Statement 2. Both the CBI and NIA works under the guidance of Ministry of Home Affairs. Which of the statements given above is or are correct? Option A 1 only, Option B 2 only, Option C both 1 and 2 and Option D neither 1 nor 2. See the correct answer for the question is Option D neither 1 nor 2. Statement 1 is incorrect because only NIA is a statutory body. CBI is created by an executive order. We saw that in the discussion itself, right? Now, the second statement is also incorrect because CBI comes under Ministry of Personal, Pensions and Grievance Redressal. While only NIA comes under Home Ministry. So, the second statement is also incorrect. So, the correct answer for the question is option D, neither 1 nor 2. Now look at the second question. Consider the following statements regarding sounding rockets. Statement 1. ISRO started launching indigenously made sounding rockets from 1950. In 1975, all sounding rocket activities were consolidated under the Rohini sounding rockets RSR program. And statement 3. Currently, six sounding rockets are offered as operational sounding rockets, namely RH-75, RH-100, RH-125, RH-200, RH-300 MK2 and RH-560 MK2. So, here you have to find the incorrect statements. See, the correct answer for this question is option C, 1 and 3 only. Now, sometimes UPSC do ask questions like these. So, now let's see why statement 1 is incorrect. See, with the establishment of the Tumba Equatorial Rocket Launch Station, that is TRLS, in 1963 at Tumba, there was a quantum jump in the scope for aeronomy and atmospheric science in India. This is because of its location. It is located close to the magnetic equator. Okay, the launch of the first sounding rocket from Tumba near Thiruvananthapuram took place on 21st November 1963. And this marked the beginning of Indian space program. The first sounding rocket to be launched from Tumba was the American Nike Apache. And after that, two stage rockets imported from Russia and France were also flown. But ISRO started launching indigenously made sounding rockets from 1965. And once experience is gained, the ISRO launched its own version Rohini RH-75 in 1965. So the year is wrong here. It is not 1950 itself. Now statement 2 is correct because in 1975 all sounding rocket activities were consolidated under the Rohini sounding rockets that is RSR program. So this statement is actually correct. Now the third statement is incorrect because RH-75 with a diameter of 75 mm was the first truly Indian sounding rocket which was followed by RH-100 and RH-125 rockets. But currently three versions are offered as operational sounding rockets. The information is given here in the table. Just go through it. So the correct answer for the question is option C, 1 and 3 only. Now moving on, consider the following statements regarding cancers. Statement 1. National Program for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular Disease and Stroke that is NPCDCS was launched in 2010 with a focus on strengthening infrastructure, human resource development, health promotion, early diagnosis, management and 
referral. Statement 2. Carcinoma is the cancer that affects the bone marrow. Which of the statements given above is or or correct? Option A 1 only, Option B 2 only, Option C both 1 and 2 and Option D neither 1 nor 2. See the correct answer for the question is Option A 1 only. Statement 1 is correct because India is experiencing a rapid health transition with the risk burden of non-communicable diseases that is NCDs surpassing the burden of communicable diseases. So here the non-communicable diseases are estimated to account for about 60% of all deaths. And these NCDs they are causing considerable loss in potential productive year of life. And losses due to premature deaths related to heart diseases, stroke and diabetes are also projected to increase over the years. So, in order to prevent and control major NCDs, the National Program for Prevention and Control of Cancer, Diabetes, Cardiovascular Disease and Stroke that is NPCDCS was launched in 2010. It was launched with focus on strengthening infrastructure, human resource development, health promotion, early diagnosis, management and referral. So, this statement is correct. Now, statement 2 is incorrect because carcinoma is cancer that forms in epithelial tissue. Epithelial tissue lines most of the organs, the internal passageways in the body like your esophagus and the skin. Okay, Most cancers affecting your skin, breast, kidney, liver, lungs, pancreas, prostate gland, head and neck are carcinomas. Now here leukemia is cancer of the body's blood forming tissues. This includes the bone marrow and the lymphatic system. So, this statement is incorrect. So, the correct answer for the question is option A, one only. So, displayed here is the quiz question for you today. Just go through the question and comment the correct answer in the comment section. So, with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for listening.